Okay, so uh, greetings to you all and welcome to today's webinar uh, for the Omnipreneurship Awards 2022 Sustainability Challenge. Uh, yeah, Branch Challenge brought to you by Nine Sigma and Tenmia Food Company. My name is Serena Bess from Nine Sigma and I'll be your host and moderator today. Please note that this webinar is being recorded. Uh, the recording and transcription will be made available on the Omnipreneurship Awards 2022 challenge page on nine sites. Um, now uh, we'll review our agenda for today. We'll introduce our speakers uh, shortly. Uh, they will discuss the project in greater depth uh, for the challenge. Then we'll take some time addressing your questions during uh, a live Q&A session, followed by a brief summary of uh, project information, including how to request additional information or assistance. Um, yeah, just to mention that this is a reminder for everyone uh, that all participants are in listen mode only as we proceed through today's presentation. Please feel free to ask your questions at any time using the Q&A uh, chat box. We'll keep track of your questions and we'll respond to them during the Q&A portion of the webinar. Should you need any information or assistance outside of today's webinar, please contact uh, the Nine Sigma Provider Help Desk at phd at ninesigma.com or vranken at ninesigma.com. Uh, at this time, I'd like to introduce our speakers and our panelists for today's webinar. From Aldaba, we have Sahar Talib, a Chief Omnipreneurship Officer. Uh, we have from Tenmia Food Company, Zulfukar Hamdeni, CEO of Tenmia Food Company. Also, we have Mohamed Tariq, CSO of Tenmia Food Company. And from Nine Sigma Europe, uh, we have Tom Vranken, a Program Manager. Um, yes. So everyone, thank you uh, all for joining us today. And at this time, uh, I will leave the floor to Sahar as she will tell us more about Aldaba Group and Omnipreneurship. Sahar? Thank you, Serene, and welcome everyone to uh, today's webinar. I'd like to start by introducing Aldaba Group. Uh, we're governed by the Omnipreneurship Ecosystem. We're a purpose-driven organization committed to being a positive global citizen, delivering meaningful impact at a measurable scale. Uh, it's a family-run business with 15,000 employees in 60 countries. We operate in uh, several sectors, which include uh, food, and that's uh, Tenmia, uh, petroleum and automotive, that's uh, Petromine, uh, housing, that's Red Sea International, and packaging, which is FPS, amongst others. What distinguishes the Debar Group from other organizations is the omnipreneurship ecosystem which guides us. Next slide, please. Um, so what is omnipreneurship? Omnipreneurship is an approach to living a life of meaning. It's the ecosystem by which we govern all our companies. So um, rather than looking at things uh, from a business perspective and just earning in an entrepreneurial uh, lens, we actually focus on equally on giving, earning and sustaining. And that's why we launch uh, challenges like these. Uh, the omnipreneurship ecosystem um, uh, focuses on giving, which lies at the center of our organization and the purpose, what, what we believe is the purpose for why we work. Uh, with every initiative that we launch, we ensure that we're also covering two or three of the sustainable developmental goals. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so in this slide, we wanted to share with you uh, past experiences we had and past challenges that we launched. So in 2020, we launched uh, a challenge where we asked the question, how can we convert uh, poultry farm waste into value? Uh, this challenge closed with over 90 proposals from 40 countries. We finally chose our winner, which was a startup called Polymeron, and we're uh, currently in the process of implementing this solution. Uh, in 2021, uh, we launched our second challenge, uh, which was a question asking, how can we convert used cooking oil into a biodegradable base oil that can be used as lubricant for our vehicles? We closed this with uh, 24 or 25 proposals from, um, I think, also 20 countries. Uh, we currently have our top two uh, finalists. Um, and they're in the process of creating a prototype that we're going to assess and we should be announcing our winner in Q1 of next year. Our third grand challenge is the grand challenge that we hope you will all participate in, 
uh, more on this coming in the next slide. Thank you. Yeah. Zulfakar, I think it's up to you to explain uh, this year's grand challenge. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Thank you very much, Sahar, for uh, uh, the background overview. And thank you, Nine Sigma, for arranging this. So can we move to the next slide? So before we get into the challenge, uh, I would like to first uh, explain and tell a little bit about uh, Tanmia Food Company. We are a listed company on Saudi stock market. We are, in fact, the only uh, poultry company which is listed there. Uh, we have about 5,000 employees currently and 26 branches spread over three countries uh, in the GCC and expanding still as uh, we go forward. We are also partners with Tyson Foods of US in the region and uh, for Halal brand globally. Uh, that's a partnership which we recently announced uh, a couple of months back. Uh, TFC is, Tanmia Food Company is a holding company and it has uh, four operating businesses under it. Uh, the biggest one currently, uh, the biggest one and the one uh, to which this challenge uh, pertains directly is Agricultural Development Company, which is a poultry company. We have our farms and uh, uh, our slaughterhouses, feed mills, hatcheries, etc. And then we uh, have our own brand of fresh chicken. Uh, under the name of Tanmia. The second company is Supreme Foods Processing Company, which uh, is the further processing company. So it makes burgers and nuggets uh, for basically who's who in the Middle East, including McDonald's, Burger King, Subway, Pizza Hut. Uh, and we are their exclusive suppliers in most of the cases for the entire region. Uh, Desert Hills for Veterinary Services. This is a trading company. Uh, and it represents uh, uh, Zotus, Evonik, uh, Cumberland, uh, uh, Genomoto, uh, Cargill in the region uh, for their animal health products and uh, other animal husbandry equipments. Uh, the last one, uh, which is our newest business, it started uh, uh, all, about 11 months ago, is Gulf Brands for Fast Foods. Uh, which is uh, a franchisee company. We uh, are franchisees currently of Popeyes in the Middle East and North Africa region. Uh, we just started, as I said, 11 months ago in Saudi Arabia, and now we are in the process of expanding it beyond Saudi Arabia as we speak. Next slide. Uh, so, as I mentioned, uh, ADC, uh, it's fully integrated. Uh, a poultry company uh, from parent stock until uh, the processing plant and uh, distribution. Uh, we have within Saudi Arabia and uh, uh, GCC countries about 6,000 points of delivery every day. Uh, and we and because of that uh, delivery, we have a com uh, fully integrated uh, distribution network, uh, which uh, covers ambient frozen and chilled uh, uh, products. Uh, we are by far the most efficient poultry company in the region. And sustainability is our focus. So that's uh, around which are all the plans and strategies uh, revolve. Uh, we have grown significantly over the past uh, uh, five, six years, and significantly means several times we have grown. And uh, sustainability is something that we have. Uh, been focusing on and keeping it as, as the core of our plans. Uh, we also believe, uh, I mean, adding value to life is something uh, which you would have heard many times, uh, but these are not words for us. And the way we have ensured that these don't remain words for us, but they become much more is that sustainability and the values we have are adding value to our PL also. So being CEO, I don't feel it as a burden on, on uh, my PL, but as something which propels me forward and improves my profitability. And that's why I think we are here for the sustainability challenge, because we want another avenue to be explored uh, for uh, our profitability, yet which uh, makes our uh, whole industry more sustainable, especially in Saudi Arabia. Next slide, please. 
Uh, so currently we are pr processing about 140 million birds per year, uh, primarily meant for GCC region. We intend to go beyond that. Uh, our current consumption is uh, 20, uh, 250,000 metric tons of grains. Now grains is the primary raw material for chicken feed, as you would know. And uh, that is also the primary cost, the biggest cost uh, driver in, in chicken production. Now, while the country is working on uh, self-sufficiency in chicken production, uh, grains are all imported. There's some merit, of course, in importing grains uh, rather than frozen chicken, but still the grains are imported and there's a huge dependence on grain exporting countries, especially Brazil, Argentina, and uh, uh, Ukraine. Uh, we have a plan to go up to 400 million birds a, a year by 2025. So that's not uh, in distant future. That is in the next three uh, years that we intend to get to that. That would mean that we will have to import about a million tons of grains every year. We have the facility, of course, so that is not the uh, issue. Uh, the uh, facilities to import and store those grains, that is something uh, uh, which uh, we, we currently have invested into, and that is there. But the international supply chains, COVID taught us, can be disrupted without warning or notice. So how secure is this initiative of food security in Saudi Arabia if the grain supplies could be disrupted? Weather is another issue which is uh, hurting the industry, uh, or the farming industry. And then the deforestation is another challenge, uh, which especially the soya uh, farming has to uh, get involved into deforestation. Otherwise, they don't have enough space with the depleting per uh, hectare yields of soya in Brazil and Argentina, especially. Uh, so what we are looking for is, I think, the the... In short, what we are looking for is an alternate grain for chicken feed or raw material for chicken feed or an alternate way of farming or cultivating these grains, uh, the corn, soya, and a little bit of barley, which could be locally in the climate of Saudi Arabia be grown so that Saudi Arabia can become as much uh, self-reliant and self-sufficient on grains production so that chicken production is not hampered because of any international uh, supply chain disruptions. So, I mean, as I said, there is climate uh, challenge, there is transportation cost challenge, there is geopolitical challenge like uh, what we saw in Ukraine, unfortunately. Uh, so all those challenges can only be mitigated if we have a local source of farming. Now, uh, we cannot, farm it in Saudi Arabia as is being done elsewhere in the world because of firstly, the soil may not be the most fertile and secondly, the water conservation is also part of the uh, food security initiative of the Saudi government. So we have to find an, a new way, we have to innovate a new way to uh, produce the chicken feed, be it different grains or raw materials or be it a different way of farming uh, corn and soya in the kingdom which is more uh, uh, water efficient and it, uh, it has a high yield per hectare because fertile land is not in abundance unfortunately in this country and of course we are looking for something which is sustainable we don't want in this process to harm the environment. We want something which is more sustainable, uh, more uh, planet friendly, uh, uh, and uh, is uh, also cost effective. Uh, we don't want to spend uh, much more uh, on this. So as I mentioned earlier, that it has to make a positive impact on the PNL. So what we are looking for is an economically viable, sustainable source of animal feed be it different grains or be it a different way of farming the existing grains. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, we, as I mentioned, we are looking uh, at something which could be uh, a breakthrough in the technology. 
of farming or feed formulation. Uh, and uh, it should be economically viable. And as I mentioned, it should be sustainable. It should not be something which uh, harms the planet, but as something which is, uses renewable energy, less water with very uh, minimal uh, carbon footprint. Uh, next one. So this is uh, just a, a more detail of the three criteria which uh, we explained in the previous slide. Uh, so, of course, it has to be scalable. We are talking about 1 million tons of grains per year, only Tanmiya's requirement. The industry's requirements would be uh, in excess of 4 million tons only for poultry. We have a substantial dairy industry in Saudi Arabia also, and uh, uh, poultry industry and dairy industry in North Africa and uh, uh, GCC which share the same climate almost and uh, the same uh, la uh, land uh, specifications. So it should be scalable. The end product should be halal. That is, of course, most important. Like insect protein is not halal. That, that uh, is not allowed. Uh, we want something which is halal, which is vegetable. It should be uh, counted as vegetable, as plant-based, not as animal-based uh, protein uh, or fat, because uh, those are the technologies which are available uh, globally, but for halal point of view, they uh, do not qualify. Uh, and we want, of course, uh, not to compromise on our feed conversion ratios or the poultry health, et cetera. So we need something which only improves on these uh, cost drivers and economic factors rather than putting a challenge and we have to spend money elsewhere uh, to uh, make use of that. Transportation cost is, of course, uh, an element here. We import corn and soy all the way from South America. It has a carbon footprint, the full transportation process. So locally uh, produced, it should have a, a smaller carbon footprint as opposed to the full uh, supply chain that we are uh, uh, undertaking right now. Next slide, please. Business perspective, I think we have discussed it uh, already. It should make economic sense. It should be positive to the PNL. It it should not be negative. Uh, we want something which is economically viable. It is feasible. It can. We are not looking at something which Tanmiya will only use. We are looking at as is the spirit and soul of this challenge. We are looking at transforming the industry, changing the way the business uh, is done uh, uh, of uh, farming. So we are looking at something which is really groundbreaking. Yet we are not looking for something which would be very expensive. It should be uh, economically uh, feasible. It should, uh, the end product is of course chicken and people have to buy that chicken. It should not uh, uh, be uh, more costly. So that is the key here that whatever technology we look at, of course, we do understand that the initial costs of uh, uh, establishing a new technology are high, but the technology should be such that with volumes, the costs will come down and uh, they would become competitive or even better than the existing grains uh, that are used uh, in the industry worldwide. And of course, we are looking at something which provides Saudi Arabia self-sufficiency, complete self-sufficiency. So that is the key here. Uh, environmental perspective, again, it is something which we have uh, discussed. We are already in certain aspects, uh, we have achieved a circular economy. So we have about a million trees project where uh, we use the wood shave uh, to as the bedding in our farms and the water from our processing plants go uh, to uh, as uh, water for uh, those trees. Uh, we also uh, are in the process of uh, producing biochar out of the farm waste. That, that biochar will be used as the soil for those trees. So, and those trees are not something which we are only uh, currently thinking about. About uh, 300,000 trees are already in the middle of the desert, 
two, three meters tall trees, and that process was already there. We want something now in, in these grains also to add to our uh, circular economy concept. We are aiming to be uh, net nature positive by 2030. That is a huge challenge, and we believe that uh, this technology should be able to add to that uh, target. So uh, th that aim, it, this technology should help us achieve that uh, aim going forward. Uh, next one. Uh, so Tarek, if you can uh, explain these potential solutions we are looking at. Tarek Khan is our uh, chief sustainability. Uh, thank you, Mr. Zulpika. Uh, so we we are looking for uh, the solution should be uh, as Mr. Zulfikar mentioned that it should be uh, the complete solution, and uh, it should be uh, uh, a solution which will uh, replace the grains or. Uh, it will uh, be the grains itself grown on so the so the land uh, which will give us the self sufficiency in uh, in in, uh, in the feed production uh, uh, the, uh, so th there are uh, different technology which are available one thing which which will ask also in the comments is that uh, insects uh, about insects insects are uh, grown on poultry manure or poultry waste are not allowed otherwise if there is, for example, uh, the technology which is uh, using uh, other waste, for example, waste from restaurants or waste from uh, dairy farm or dairy waste, uh, expiry milk or cheese and all these things, there that will be, I think, halal and that will be uh, acceptable. But it should be uh, cost effective. Like the initial investment in the production should not be uh, hindering the, the the whole process. Uh, and the, since water, uh, uh, the, the, there are technology available which are uh, the, uh, on the on the uh, coming in commercial phases, uh, which are harvesting water from the environment. So, uh, for example, the, uh, uh, here in certain areas, uh, the, the humidity is not that much, and uh, harvesting humidity and converting it to water is not uh, feasible. Maybe not feasible. Maybe feasible, but it depends on technology. But we can have. Uh, areas near to sea, sea, level, sea shores and uh, Red Sea and uh, the, these areas where the humidity is very high so we can harvest water. So the technology should harvest water from the environment. It should not come in water from the ground. Otherwise it will be, the government does not allow everywhere that you can pump water from the ground and you can uh, uh, grow uh, uh, crops and all these things is not allowed. Uh, because of uh, the water here in Saudi Arabia is mineral water. It is not the water which is replacing uh, when you pump it out. Uh, so th that is the thing which, that is one of the most important things that, that water should be harvested and or the, we should, they, they should give us the technology which will recycle the water from our process and uh, it should be used uh, in agriculture. Uh, the other thing is that there are alternative feed crops uh, for example, the, 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 there are uh, technologies coming which uh, which is giving us uh, alternative. For example, replacing soya with some other crop or uh, corn with some other crop, which can easily be uh, cultivated in a desert uh, and dry environment. So that will also be very uh, acceptable, and that will be like you saw the, the good solution. And it should be uh, uh, maybe the crop crop is not. Uh, there can be uh, crops which will be we can grow in, for example, in the greenhouse. Maybe the, the, there will be a technology which will not use the land, uh, open land, but the protein level will be so high that we can replace, for example, we can uh, replace the major amount, major portion of our uh, uh, existing raw material with that. So that will also be a good solution. Vertical farming. Uh, uh, that, that can also be uh, 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 there is there are technologies which are converting carbon dioxide to protein uh, that is also uh, coming in commercial phases and uh, uh, there are companies who are working on that and they are commercializing that so the, the these things uh, if it is uh, applicable and uh, it is implemented in so the uh, environment then it will be very good this, especially the carbon dioxide to protein is very good because this these protein are ready to eat and they have very high pro, uh, proportion of amino acids. And uh, the, so the, the, the portion in the, the percentage of these proteins are so high that you can replace more uh, raw material percentage of material. Uh, 
So these are the things, the main thing is the harvesting of uh, water from uh, other sources, uh, from here or from other sources, or uh, the other thing is that as uh, our CEO has mentioned that it should be economically viable and it should replace the major portion of uh, our existing raw materials. So that is from my side. If you have any question, please. Okay, thank you very much, Muhammad and Zulfika for explaining the grand challenge here today. Um, in the next section, I'll give you a short overview of our grand challenge submission process. So what are the most important steps in our process? What is the timeline? How should I submit my proposal? Who will be evaluating the proposals? And what can we gain? What can I gain by participating in this grand challenge, in this innovation contest. So that is what I'm going to explain in this next section. So first of all, I would like to mention that all the information about this grand challenge is available at our project page at Nine Sites. Um, Nine Sites is Nine Sigma's platform where we post our projects, but also where we collect our participants' proposals. Um, in addition to the information that was shared in emails and in social media media posts, uh, our webpage www.9sigma.com slash s slash Omnipreneurship Awards 2020 offers you all the information about Omnipreneurship, uh, about Tamiya Food Company, about the Aldaba Group and the past challenges, and of course about this year's grand challenge itself. So at our webpage, there are three important documents that you should read before participating in the challenge. The first one is the detailed challenge description. And this one contains all the information that should allow you to understand what this project is about and what the project goals are. A second document that you should download and read carefully are the terms and conditions or the official rules of this grand challenge. So please have a look at this document to better understand how we are going to deal with IP, who is eligible, and what are the next steps if you get selected as one of the five finalists. Now, slightly different compared to other challenges that we launched at our platform nine sites is that we have prepared a response form in a Word document. And we would like you to use this template to share information about your proposal. Also make sure that you're writing down the right information in the right sections, because that will help us, of course, that will help the evaluation team with smoothing the evaluation and comparison of the different proposals. As you can see on the right-hand side of this slide, um, all three documents can be found or at the home tab of the web page or at the required documents tab. So please download them and read them through before starting to write your proposal. Now here you can see the timeline of this grand challenge. Uh, the grand challenge opened a couple months ago. And I think the most important date for you to remember is the submission deadline. So the closure of this challenge will be on the 21st of December at 12 o'clock in the evening, Brussels local time. So at that moment, the website will close for all participants. And I would like to give you the advice not to wait until the last moment to start submitting your proposals. Um, also try to submit your proposal a couple days before this deadline to avoid any issues. It could happen, for example, that your um, internet connection is down or too slow or too many people are visiting the page at the same time. So in case you would have certain issues while you're submitting your proposal, feel free to contact me at vanken at 9sigma.com or phd at 9sigma.com. And we will try to help you as soon as possible. But like I said, please don't wait until the last moment. Also, I would like to highlight that in case of grand challenges or innovation contests, it is not possible to extend the deadline with a couple of days. So 12 o'clock on the 21st of December will close for submissions. Now, what would we like you to submit? Um, our entire process is based on the exchange of non-confidential information. And in our response form template, we have created several sections where we would like you to address the different aspects of your proposal. As I said before, all the information that we would like to collect should be non-confidential. 
we would like to know what you're capable of, preferably substantiated with supporting information, but we don't want you to describe in all its detail how your technology will work. So it's really only about non-confidential description of your technology. Now, besides the technical information, we would also like to understand how you envision the future collaboration with Tomia once you've been awarded as a finalist or as a winner. Now, in essence, to submit your proposal, we advise you to download and fill in that response form template, which is available at the project page. And as you can see on the right hand side of the slide, this is how it looks like. So it's, I think, about eight pages long with different sections. We're asking you to fill in um, the business aspect, the technical aspect, the envir environmental aspect of your proposal. Now, we advise you to prepare your proposal offline. Um, and while you're doing that, don't forget to change the name of the file before you're uploading it to nine sites. So I prefer you to add your company name or your personal name, add it to the file name. And when your proposal is ready, please visit the project page again, click the respond button, log in with your nine sites account and upload your Word document, your template into the online response form. Don't forget to click the submit button, as you can see here in the bottom right of this slide. Don't for forget to click this button. Um, it's not sufficient to save and close because then it will remain in draft status. Now, who's going to evaluate your proposal? So we're going to evaluate your proposal in three different phases. First phase will be Nine Sigma's PM, which is in this case myself. I will go through all the proposals that we're receiving. I'll check if there is certain information missing. Like for example, it could be that an attachment with crucial information hasn't been uploaded properly. Then I'll let you know that there is certain information missing. We'll also check that there is no confidential information written in the proposal. Again, if that would be the case, we'll ask you to remove that. And in addition to that, we'll also check if you're eligible to participate in this challenge. For example, employees from Tamiya or the Aldama Group, they cannot participate and win the award, nor do people who are, let's say, below the age of 18 years old. Once you've passed those three criteria, um, the proposals will be shared with a team of internal and external experts. Now, today we can officially announce that similar to the last years, Gail Clintworth, founder of Savo um, Project Developers and the Special Advisor to System IQ, Nikhil Siha, CEO of One Valley, and Sylvain Montica from SGH2 Energy will be joining the external jury. With their experience in commercializing and implementing solutions, they will be mainly focusing on the business aspects of the submitted proposals. Now, complementary to this team, the previous three, we have been able to mobilize two other subject matter experts. So the first one is Dr. Zahid Nazir, who is a nutritional research expert in poultry and uh, swine feed. And we've got Professor Rod Wing, who is the director of the Center of Agriculture at KAUST in Saudi Arabia. Now, all these five experts, they will make their recommendation to Tamia in the final stages of the evaluation phase. Now, how will be your um, proposal evaluated? So as I mentioned before, Nine Sigma will check the eligibility, the completeness and the confidentiality of the proposals. And if it's meeting those criteria, it will be moved to the next phase where the evaluators will then do the first technical assessment. And this will be done by um, answering questions like, is it a conceptual proposal? Or is, there already, is it already something which has been tested at lab or at a pilot scale? Does the proposal lead to an end product that is of interest to Tamiya? I think that is also a very important uh, question that needs to be answered. Then as a next step, the environmental impact, as Sulfika mentioned, will be assessed. Is it contributing to a, let's say, carbon neutral future for Tamiya? 
um, what do we learn about the environmental impact of that specific proposal? So that's another thing that will be assessed. And finally, which is also very important, is the business side of things. Now, does the participant believe that their proposal can be done in a cost-effective manner? I think that's very important. What kind of CAPEX, OPEX can we expect? We know that it's not always that easy to come up with exact numbers, but can we get a ballpark estimate of what can we expect? What kind of investment should be done by Tomia? And also, is the collaboration between yeah, the participant and Tomia really of interest? Is that what they're looking for? Now, based on all these criteria, the jury will evaluate your proposal. And after having reviewed the written proposals, then participants with their teams will be invited for an online pitching session. And we are, well, we are planning, we are anticipating that this will take place probably mid or end of February next year. And during those sessions, we'll invite you to present your solution in more or less 20 minutes to the entire jury, followed by a Q&A. Now, why should you participate? Um, Tomia, they're prepared to recognize um, $100,000 in cash for the first phase of this challenge, which means that up to five respondents will receive an initial recognition of $20,000 each. So those finals will come from a short list, as I mentioned before, from a short list of 10 participants who will be invited to the pitching sessions. And from the moment that Nine Sigma, well, from the moment that the decision has been made and Nine Sigma has informed you about your selection as being one of the five finalists, plus you agree to accept the prize, you will move to a second phase the demonstration phase. And in this phase, five finalists will be asked to demonstrate their solution as some kind of a proof that it will work to Tamiya's team, to um, a team of experts. So the 20K, you should see that um, as, let's say, let's say some kind of a, a tool to adjust perhaps your proposed solution or technology if needed, or adjust slightly adjust your process before you can show to Tamiya what you're capable of. Now, the practical side of the demos is something that should be discussed with Tamiya at the beginning of the demonstration phase, and that might be slightly different for the different finalists. It depends on the TRL. It depends on the type of solution that you're offering. And then once you've done the demonstrations, you've finalized the demonstrations, Tamiya will decide using recommendation from experts, they will decide um, who they would like to announce as the winner of the challenge. And this winner will then be awarded with a $1 million collaboration contract to kickstart the collaboration between Tamiya and the winner. Now, for the remaining finalists and the other participants, there's still a opportunity to collaborate with Tamiya. So you have informed already about the technology that you have to offer. So there's still some room to negotiate if there is an opportunity to collaborate and apply your technology, implement your technology in a certain situation. Now, there are a couple of other questions that are coming back frequently, and I would like to address them in the following section. Um, what is important about IP? So what about IP and how am I protected? A, as a part of my role here at Nine Sigma and in the Grand Challenge, um, is to make sure that there is no confidential information written in the proposal. That is one thing. So I will be your first line of protection here. Um, when you submit a proposal, you should focus, as I mentioned before, you should focus on what you can do, not on all the details, how exactly you're going to do this. So you can discuss an argument, what you are expected to achieve without revealing anything that is confidential. And what I would like to mention is that by participating in the challenge, you're not granting any intellectual property rights related to the content of your proposal, not to Nine Sigma, not to Tamiya, not to the Alphabet Group. So you will still be the owner of your IP when you're participating in this challenge. Now, more details about the IP rights is, can, can be found in the official rules. 
Now, what is the deadline of this um, grand challenge? So, as I mentioned before, it's going to be uh, the 21st of December, a Wednesday at 12 midnight. So, please don't wait until the last moment to submit your proposal. What is the best way to respond to this challenge? Is to first register yourself on the Nine Sites website. Make sure that you have an account. And once you've done that, you should download and read the terms and conditions of this grand challenge and read also, also the uh, project description. And once you believe, once you still believe that this challenge perfectly fits into your expertise, your future plans, and the technology that you have to offer or you can offer, you should download um, the response form and start filling that in. As I mentioned before, don't forget to change the title of your document so that we're not making any mistakes there. Also, it's um, possible to upload additional information, such as an article, um, which you believe proves that your technology could work. Or it's also possible to upload additional slides or images. Even a link, a video link, can be added to explain how your technology works. So anything that might help to get the interest from Tamiya can be submitted on our portal. Now, what type of solutions is Tamiya looking for? So I think Mohammed already covered a couple. I'm just uh, repeating that once more. Um, Tamiya realized that this challenge is or can be addressed in several ways. Now, the most important questions you should ask yourself is will the solution help Tamiya becoming independent of the imported feed? Can the solution be considered as a sustainable alternative? Does it have the potential to be scaled and applied locally in Saudi Arabia? And will it become cost effective over time? If the answers to those questions are positive, I believe you're already on the right track. Now, ideally, Tamiya would like to receive proposals that can solve the challenge completely, as Muhammad mentioned before. However, I also realize that given the fact that different aspects come into play, we realize that many of you may only have a partial solution to the problem. So I still would like to invite organizations who have such a part, partial solution, because then Tamiya could consider putting the different pieces together and build a sustainable solution, a customized solution to reach their goals. So ideally, a complete solution to the challenge, that is what we would like to get, but partial solutions are definitely of interest too. Now, what are the solutions that we're interested in? As we uh, covered before, so technologies which help Tamiya with improving local soil in a sustainable way for a long period of time. That could be one thing. Um, technology that allow Tamiya to use water more efficiently in agricultural activities. Uh, are there other ways to produce feed, proteins that may not require any agricultural activities? Uh, we know that those could exist as well. Um, these are just a couple examples, of course, but there may be more. Um, as long as the end goal is becoming independent of imported feed, and if it can be achieved in a cost-effective and sustainable manner. Now, what, I'm, what if I'm one of the five finalists? Um, if you're one of the five final or the final five, you will receive a compensation of $20,000 each. When these final five agree with their selection as a finalist, they'll be asked to realize this demo, as I mentioned before. And the 20K should compensate the efforts for participating, initially participating in the challenge, which means writing your initial proposal. But it should also be considered as a compensation for some future efforts that need to be done during the demonstration phase, like performing a demonstration or providing additional information to be able to create a complete business case. I would like to repeat that this is something that should be discussed prior to the second phase together with Tamiya. Now, at the end of phase two, maximally one finalist will be selected as a winner. And before again officially announcing the winner, the preferred finalist will be invited by Tamiya to negotiate 
how could a collaboration look like? And when you both come to an agreement, that $1 million contract will be awarded to the winner to kickstart the collaboration again. Now, I realize that I've said quite a lot. So I believe now the floor is open for questions. Um, before this meeting, we already received quite a lot of questions um, when you registered to this grand challenge. So now we'll be taking the time to answer some of those. Um, if we cannot answer all of them today, then what we will do is we will upload uh, the questions and of course the answers to the transcripts of this grand challenge uh, webinar. And um, I think now we can have a look at the questions that have been provided in the meantime have been put in the Q&A. So let me quickly have a look at what we have received so far. So one question is, I think for you, Mohammed. So what crops are you actually interested in? I think you covered that already, but could you repeat that once more? Is there a specific crop that you would like to focus on or is it pretty open? Uh, it's open as, as, uh, as long as uh, it uh, replaces soya and in corn in the in the feed. So if, for example, soya is the protein source and corn is the uh, uh, carbohydrates source for feed. So uh, if these two things are covered and uh, they are fulfilling the requirements of the carbohydrates and protein, uh, then it's okay. We we are not uh, focusing on certain kind of crops. But but as as Mr. Zulfikar also mentioned, that it should not be. For example, the, the crops is replacing soya and very good in protein uh, percentage, but it has anti-nutrition value of uh, which is affecting the bird performance, although it's fulfilling the requirement of the protein, but there is some other uh, anti-nutrition factor in, the, uh, in that uh, crop, which is affecting the performance of the bird in the, in the end. So it, there should not be like uh, anti-nutritional value should not be there. And another question is, do you have a preferred region in Saudi Arabia where, let's say, the crop should be produced or grown or, or feed should be produced and, or grown? And, uh, I, th I believe uh, it, 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 we are not restricted to area, but uh, if we, uh, we are in the certain, uh, central uh, Saudi Arabia, so if the solution is uh, implemented in central area, then the transportation cost will be very low. And uh, so in the crops production, the 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 cellulose part is also valuable to us. We can crush that and use as a bedding material. For example, if somebody grow corns, then uh, the plant part, uh, the corn, the, the seed part, we can use in the feed. But the plant part, we can use for fuel and for uh, other purpose. So the transportation of the whole process will be uh, re, uh, minimized, and that will be more carbon. Uh, you can say uh, carbon reduction will be uh, more as compared to if we are uh, far away from uh, our own uh, production area. And then but, but, the, but the solution can be anywhere. And so the inside, so the review. Yeah, just to summarize, if I may, uh, what Tarek said, the ideal would be central region of Saudi Arabia. However, within Saudi Arabia, um, we, we are uh, open to any area, any terrain. Okay. Then I'm getting another question about the demonstration phase. So maybe it will be difficult to show the demonstration phase uh, of our solution within six months because it takes quite some time to produce our product and then test them um, if they are, let's say, and then apply them under desert soil conditions and get some results. So is that a problem that it might take a little bit more time than the three to four months which are being mentioned on the website. So I think I could answer that question. Um, I believe there is some flexibility here. Um, three to four months would be ideal, um, but I would say describe in your proposal what time you would require. And then after reviewing the entire proposals, all the proposals that we've received, I believe then Tomia will make a decision on, okay, I think the technology is the most important aspect. And if you believe, if you have sufficient evidence that your, that your technology may be very beneficial, the entire end result, then I think we have some flexibility here. 
when it comes to the timeline. Now, please correct me if I'm wrong, Mohamed. Yeah, it, it is. Uh, if the solution is good, then we can uh, have flexibility in timing. It's not a problem, I, I believe. Then let me quickly go through some other questions. So there's a person who said like, well, I may have different solutions to offer. Am I allowed to submit multiple proposals? So I would say yes. That is a possibility. You can, you are allowed to submit different proposals. Um, and then they will be evaluated separately by the entire team of evaluators and experts. Um, there's another specific question about the template itself. It's about why is my bank account number required in the proposal? Um, but to be frank, frank and honest with you that that's just for let's say the follow-up so once we have identified five finalists we'll have to transfer a certain amount of money the 20k for example to your organization and that is actually why we're requesting you to fill that in from the beginning so that we have all the information from the start and we don't need to chase everybody in that specific case another question is my team consists out of uh, people working at a university and is there a maximum amount of people that can participate so i think there is not really a problem um, so everybody is is allowed to participate in this challenge so it doesn't really matter if you're a university a startup an individual or a large company so we, there are no restrictions when it comes to that. And also the maximum amount of, of team members. There is no limitation there. Um, let me see. So there is another question about the crops, but we I think we covered that already. Um, there seems to be a question about, so from the moment so let's assume that we have a crop which may be lower in nutritional value, but it is a more sustainable solution to the current way of working. Is that still of interest to Tamia? So when so our see, uh, we are not looking for alternate crops necessarily. What we are looking for is something which can be grown in Saudi Arabia. So yes, the nutritional value of a crop could be lower than corn and soya, but if its cost effectiveness is there and it can be uh, uh, cultivated in Saudi Arabia, yes, we, we are interested. Um, and then let me see, we still have five minutes. So let's try to find some other questions. Some are about insects, but I think we covered that already. So let me see. So the solution that we should provide, should that already be at an industrial scale? Or is it also lab scale that, 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 that is of interest? So what scales are you looking for? Lab scale is acceptable, provided it is uh, scalable to industrial levels. And then let me see if I can find one last question. I must say that is, there's a lot overlapping. So we're getting quite a lot of repetitive questions. That's why I'm trying to seek if there's something which hasn't been covered yet. Um, it's about water availability so you mentioned at the beginning of the presentation that you um, have your one million trees project uh, and you're using wastewater for that is it possible to get access to that kind of wastewater to grow certain crops absolutely yes and do you have so an idea it, yeah. so uh 
you, you mean the idea of the of the volumes correct uh, no i do not have an idea about the exact volumes but there is sufficient volume of uh, uh, wastewater treated up to agricultural level gray water level is available in saudi arabia and uh, we could get uh, volumes i don't know um, but it's produced on daily basis in all the industries in Saudi Arabia or uh, sewage water uh, used in the cities. So we it could be contracted. Now, perhaps one last question, but I don't know if you are able to share that. So uh, people are asking for uh, some kind of a cost estimation for soy and, and, and corn per ton at this moment in Saudi Arabia, so that they have an idea about right, where they should play around. Yeah, so it's very easy. Uh, I mean, it's it fluctuates every day. You can go to CBOT uh, website. You'll see the uh, current traded uh, value of corn and uh, soya and all the other commodities. On top of that, we have transportation cost. Um, again, that is something uh, which fluctuates and has been very high uh, recently because of uh, various things which have been happening uh, globally. Uh, but 80% of the cost is what is the CBOT cost, and uh, you can go and look at that. That fluctuates significantly. Okay, good. Now, there may be some other questions which we haven't answered yet today. So, we'll, as I mentioned before, we will cover that in the transcripts of this uh, grant or of this uh, webinar. Yes. So, um... Thank you, uh, everyone, for that engaging Q&A session. Uh, as Tom stated previously, uh, so any questions that has not been uh, answered live will be made available along with the recording for the webinar on the Omnipreneurship Awards 2022 page uh, on nine sites following this webinar. So what can you do today? Um, so on your screen, here is some important information. First, um, yeah, you have to visit the Grand Challenge uh, site, which is www.ninesites.com slash s slash Omnipreneurship Awards 2022. Yeah, which is 22 at the end. You need to register to stay uh, connected. Uh, also to download the required uh, documents. Uh, so for that detailed challenge description, official rules and the response for a template. Uh, also prepare your proposal offline and submit your proposal with the online response. Um, yeah, before Wednesday, December 21st. And uh, also at it will close at that time. So make sure to submit your proposal uh, before uh, 12 p.m. Brussels time. Uh, a key piece of information is the deadline to submit, which is important. Please make sure uh, to submit your proposal online prior to that day again, which is December 21st, 2022, uh, 11.59 p.m. CET, uh, because we won't be able to accept the proposal after that time. Um, so this concludes our webinar uh, for today. Uh, one final reminder is that this webinar will be is recorded and was recorded and will be made available along with the Q&A transcript. If you need uh, more information regarding submissions and the challenge, please feel free to contact Tom. And there you can see his information. Uh, he's the main contact. And you can reach out to him uh, on his email, uh, vranken at ninesigma.com. And uh, thank you to our speakers for their time and expertise, and also to our audience today. We appreciate your time and look forward to receiving your submissions. Yes, yeah, so have a great day, everyone. Thank you all. Bye. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.